The art scene in Brevard has been making news, fueled in part by a refocused mission for the Brevard Cultural Alliance. You may have heard about the surprising Art and Algorithms Festival in Titusville coming up on its second year. Last year, it blew away visitors with world-class digital art displays and a theme homegrown on the Space Coast. But the evolution has also brought its share of controversy to the Brevard Cultural Alliance. It has had to field uncomfortable questions about its use of funds from local tourism taxes. To learn more about art, funding, and urban renewal, I interviewed Neil Levine, executive director of the BCA, who didn't shrink from a single question. Watch. Neil, thank you so much for joining us in the studio here today. Let's talk about, first, some news that the Brevard Cultural Alliance made with a study about the impact of arts in Brevard County. Um, I believe just to, to one of the key findings there was that 66 area arts organizations and events added more than $68 million to Brevard County's economy, which was an increase from the last time we looked at this, about two years ago, I believe. Why? What's going on? A uh, really interesting question. Um, first of all, let me um, uh, give some context to the answer. Um, the arts are really important, uh, and they're important for so many different reasons, but one of the reasons why the arts are important is they're an economic engine, and they contribute to the local economy in a significant manner. And most people don't realize that, and hadn't realized that for some time. So I've been here for three years, as you know, and when I came here, the first thing I wanted to know was, where's the economic impact data and uh, we didn't have anything that was current, so we commissioned one, and that's the one uh, to which you refer uh, a couple of years ago. EDC very kindly did that for us. Um, two years down the road, we've commissioned another one, a company called Precipio did that for us, and they're staffed by professors from FIT, economists. And what's important about that is that we don't have an arts organization measuring an arts organization which doesn't give people confidence in the results. And so we wanted something that was robust and something that validated the results. 66 organizations out of the sector, that's not the full sector, so this isn't the full picture. And yet this picture is extraordinary. Those 66 organizations had sales revenues of over $119 million. I'll say that again, over $119 million. And um, I've got a little crib sheet that you'll be okay. able to use later. Um, and they added $68.5 million to local GDP. This benefits everyone. Um, the arts and cultural sector truly is an economic engine that's helping us grow out of the recession. So to the second part of your question, yes, we're emerging from the recession. It's a bit of a bumpy ride, but we can see that emergence. Now, arts and culture is all about discretionary spend. People choose whether they want to spend that or not. It's not like gas or taxes. It's a choice. And so as we see those revenues rise, we can see how people are starting to loosen the purse strings. The discretionary spend is increasing. The other thing that we should note is that the arts and cultural sector has proven very resilient. Um, it's come through this recession solidly and uh, is That's in a growth phase now. What gets counted in terms of the dollars and cents here? I, I trust it means everything from somebody builds a sculpture and sells it to tickets sold for community theaters, that kind of thing. Is, is there anything else that, that I should be thinking about? Excellent question. I, I, I do like your interview. Um, the, the answer is um, a, a little complex if we delve into it. So um, uh, with, without uh, being um, too simplistic, let me explain it this way. Um, for an economic impact study, we examine direct expenditure, indirect, and induced. Okay. Um, those three elements. So let me give you some examples. Direct expenditure would be where my wife and I go to a theatre, we hand our money over for the tickets, and we take the tickets. That's direct, uh, direct revenue okay. to them. Now, we go into the theatre, the curtains open, and we go, wow. That's because we suspended disbelief. No. <laughs> what, what's happened is they've taken our dollars, they've run out the back door to the local hardware store and bought paint and painted wonderful scenery. So that money they've spent in the hardware store, that's indirect impact. Now, the salesman at the hardware store 
has taken some of that money and his wages and on his way home he'll stop and buy some fruit and veg and he pays the cashier and the checkout uh, she will get some of that as her wages and that's an induced impact of course she goes home she pays the utility bills and the interesting thing is the guy at the hardware store and the girl at the checkout don't even know what's on at the theatre and so it ripples through the economy and benefits everyone let's talk about what the the Brevard Culture Alliance does a little bit I think traditionally it was almost a clearinghouse of money that came in from the bed tax that we charge on tourists and then it would be redistributed out to every sort of organization to be spent on their own promotions and that sort of thing you and the board of the Brevard Culture Alliance I understand have gone through some change in the last year or two rethinking the mission refocusing what you do tell us a little bit about that absolutely the um the Brevard Cultural Alliance is a local arts agency and uh, in other parts of the world they're called an arts council and they do uh, much of the same thing and the work of a, a, a local arts agency is to be um, a, a pretty robust advocate for the benefits uh, that the arts bring to the, uh, the community. They also work with other arts agencies um, throughout the state. Uh, and they work at a federal level as well. Uh, their job is to be the professional umbrella organization that represents the arts and cultural sector. So it would be the equivalent of um, perhaps you belong to a professional organization as a journalist. Um, I certainly belong to a couple of professional organizations. And so the local arts agencies are the professional organization for artists and for the arts institutions. We've not stopped that. We continue to do that and we're proud to um, represent all of the artists and uh, institutions here. But we do so many things in so many areas, we had to make sense of it. And so we came up with three strategic priorities. Okay. Um, that's a test, because if it doesn't fit into one of the strategic priorities, it's background noise and we can't focus on that. You see, we're, we're a not-for-profit and a not-for-profit actually means it's a business we just use different metrics so we have to run in a business-like way to actually succeed with our mission and so our three strategic priorities are um, developing a cultural destination um, education both in a formal setting and in the broader sense of that word and sector sustainability which means not just sustaining the sector but growing the sector as well so let me speak to um, a couple of those and then I'll address your question directly. Okay. I do meander on that. Um, if we think about um, education, uh, some stats for you to think about. Uh, we work in partnership with Brevard Public School and through that partnership, we actually directly serve over 4,000 young people and we do that in 30 schools. Interestingly, it's not all after school finger painting. We've worked with the curriculum directors and a lot of our programs are graded they're in this classroom and they're graded. We've also worked to develop uh, programs which are at the intersect of art and technology, which actually prepares young people to think about tomorrow's jobs in the creative economy. If we think about sector sustainability, we can also think about, uh, we as local arts agency have worked throughout the year uh, with the other local arts agencies. We've done weekly conference calls, emails, letters, so on and so forth to be robust advocates. And this year, it's a huge precedent. Our state grants to the arts organizations here in Brevard topped over a million dollars. Uh, that's a million new dollars coming into the economy. Uh, and that's without precedent, that's huge. So we're delighted with that. And now we come to cultural destination. Cultural destination is fascinating because we talked about the economic impact study a moment ago. One of the other things that we find within the economic impact study is that there's an 80-20 split. And 80% 80 of attendees are residents and 20% are visitors. Now this is important. And the reason it's important is because the residents will spend on average $21, whereas the visitors spend on average over $50. That's almost twice as much. And it's a fresh dollar. Those are new dollars that come into our economy instead of recirculating the same dollars. So cultural destination is critically important to us. And in order to build to cultural destination, 
we've taken several innovative initiatives forward. And um, those are um, in Titusville, in the north of the county. That's and the art and algorithms event that uh, I wanted to ask you about today, correct? Absolutely, okay. yes, yeah. And, uh, and the other one is one we're just beginning in Palm Bay. And um, the, um, there's another little card, which is <laughs> okay. the three strategic priorities. And here's, here's a card which is about art and algorithms. Um, would you like to talk about that now? Or do you Let's have do that because first? I thought that was a really innovative event. Um, it's coming up October 3rd through 12th. Yes. So that, uh, and I'm going to make sure that I get up there this year because I heard nothing but great reviews of it um, in terms of people really being surprised, getting a lot out of it. You know, they went up there expecting there to be a little bit of here and there, and it wound up being a big event, you know, with a lot to see and experience. And, uh, and they were excited about it. So I wanted to try to explain that a little bit to our viewers in case they might be interested, but it seems like this is the kind of thing you're talking about growing arts in Brevard County by bringing in new dollars. Is that correct? So explain it. It is. Tell, tell me about it the whole is. thing. Yeah, um, and um, I, I'm delighted to see you so excited, and it kind of mirrors my excitement as well. Let, let me start by saying um, on algorithms, this, this thing that I'm so tremendously excited about is um, a concept that we've worked with with the people in the north of the county. But Brevard Cultural Arts, BCA, we didn't do it. We don't do it. It's what we call capacity building. Okay. So we're teaching local people how to do it, and in that way, it will continue, it will sustain, it will grow. And the other reason it will continue and sustain and grow is because we sat down with the local people. We did visioning days. We asked who they thought they were and we examine the perception of others about who they are because what we were trying to derive from that was their authentic identity. So I'll paraphrase because I don't want to delve in this too deeply. Um, the people in the north of the county we might think of as um, rocket engineers, I mean, they fly things into space, right. aeronautical engineers, STEM, highly educated people. Mars probes. Thank you, yes, absolutely, very exciting stuff. So in terms of paintings, it doesn't quite do it. It needs to be something that lends itself to that STEM mindset in terms of an algorithm that could sit behind the artwork. And so we slowly move to arts in the digital domain and we express that as a festival called Art and Algorithms. There are several reasons why it's a festival. The uh, first reason is because they don't have a lot of venues up there. They have the theater up there, but not a lot of venues. Um, so we work with what we have. And what we had was, uh, because of the economy taking a hit when the manned space program stopped, we had a lot of vacant storefronts. And so we decided that the festival would be a walkable downtown festival, and we would turn all of those vacant stores into galleries featuring digital work. Um, this would bring people into spaces they would never have gone into before, in the hope that they would rent or buy them, which would help kickstart the economy. So there's a little box there we needed to put a check in. We also agreed that when you do work of this nature, we, we need something that's of international, national or international note and import. Um, it's no good having the local embroiderers guild because they have one in Ohio. No one's gonna come here to see that. So it's gotta be fascinating work of national importance. And so we helped them with the programming. And in, in the one you referred to, the last one, uh, we had uh, Professor Richardson come in from Europe. Um, he's distinguished by having the first, the world's first PhD for holographic imagery. Wow. And he brought in a collection of holograms, and we think of holograms like that, but these holograms are the size of the wall. And uh, they defy logic. Um, and um, they were absolutely devastating and he came and he gave talks and lectures. The next stop uh, for that exhibition was St. Petersburg in Russia, so world class. And then we had a, a film curator, a guy called Clifton Stewart coming from Europe. Uh, he's a voting member of BAFTA, which is the European equivalent of the Oscars. Uh, he's also uh, on faculty in two universities and a visiting professor in a third university. He's a busy guy. And he brought us a festival of short films. Each short film was a Grand Prix film, an award-winning film, 
and there were 90 films from 70 countries that ran throughout the 10 days. Extraordinary. Some of these are inside, some things are going up on walls, I remember. Absolutely, yeah. So Clifton came in and um, he's an award-winning screenwriter and he did talks and lectures as well. The wall that you refer to was, um, was, was shocking for some people. It was absolutely fantastic. We commissioned a piece of three-dimensional work and we used the side of the theatre to project it on. I mean, the whole side of the theatre. So it's almost a city block, two stories high, and you were dragged into this three-dimensional world. It began with a rocket factory, again resonance for those local people, and then dragged you through into a virtual reality. It was extraordinary, it was quite astonishing. And you have a partnership with, or, or some kind of uh, involvement with the University of Central Florida, correct? Where I know visual arts, simulation, digital arts is a big thing over there, and I know having done some work with student journalists at UCF recently, um, they're interested in what might be going on over here. Tell us about that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We have a partnership with UCF. We're, we're delighted about that. We also have a partnership with FIT. Uh, we have a partnership with the University of Coventry in um, the UK, uh, De Montfort University in Leicester, and last night um, I arranged a partnership with Cal Arts in California as well. Um, we're really interested in young people. We're interested in their energy. We're interested in their, their view of the world, a different view of the world. And we're interested in preparing people for tomorrow's jobs. It's, it's generally thought uh, that uh, within the next decade, Orlando will become a hub, technological hub. A lot of uh, companies are leaving Silicon Valley, going across to Atlanta. Now they're thinking about Orlando. Weather's great cost of living is good and over the next 10 years that will become a very important hub. So provoking people to think about these skill sets, provoking people to think about where they might be going over the next 10 years will help him prepare that ladder. Uh, that's very exciting for us. I like the way it matches a type of or, or a genre or something, either that digital part, the algorithms, the technology, something in that area really feels it owns and it's they're proud of with experimentation and it makes this a cutting edge site it becomes a big event and in the process it helps with with economic redevelopment to some degree um, I just I just think uh, I'm excited to see how this progresses in the future it's something that Brevard County could be proud of if it continues to do do well and attract all these people from all around the world um, and so who else wants to get in on this sounds like Palm Bay is uh, uh, and, and the BCA are teaming up for something interesting uh, in the near future. Abs absolutely, yes. And um, when um, we began the work with Tardisville, I was talking to uh, Commissioner Fisher, um, a, 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 a tremendous community leader, and I described what we had managed to do uh, earlier in my career in um, cities in, in the UK and how we had used the arts as a lever for regeneration and uh, he listened to that and he said we'd like one of those. Um, so that, that was the beginning of that and then people came to Art and Algorithms, uh, amongst them the Mayor of Palm Bay and the Mayor of Cocoa Beach and they looked at it and the Mayor of Palm Bay said we'd like one of those too. And so we've begun um, this initiative with Palm Bay, we're at the scoping end of this now, we're building our partnerships and right now um, what we're considering doing is using um, kinetic art. So kinetic art, a large piece of sculpture that respond to light, uh, solar, to wind, to water, and they move. And they're absolutely fascinating in the way they move. And the reason we want to do this is because, again, it's a catalyst to provoke debate. And we want to provoke debate around the environment. And we want to think about um, aquaculture, farming, uh, fish farming, uh, we want to think about the ocean, we want to think about our, our natural environment, we the want Indian to think River. about ecology, uh, absolutely yes. And so these huge pieces uh, begin to speak to that and provoke that debate. And part of the um, initial uh, outing will be a huge symposium, a conference, uh, we're partnering with people uh, who will bring in noted speakers and ultimately perhaps will grow to um, a convention destination where people interested in this sort of conversation uh, will be attracted to Palm Bay, 
will raise Palm Bay to the national agenda uh, with respect to environmental issues and it will also bring people here who will bring their wallets and so it will help with uh, economic regeneration as well. So that's the big picture and um, we have lots and lots of partners who are helping us with that. Can I just go back to arts and algorithms and mention one partner that was really important? A partner that was really, that is really important is the National Endowment for the Arts. Now the NEA is um, a federal organization, a national organization. Um, they looked at what we were doing. They're absolutely fascinated that we were using the arts to um, focus, to be a nexus for the community, uh, to get um, a, an engaged community, a vibrant community. Um, and um, they asked if we had another project that they may wish to fund. And so we spoke to this because I said we're really interested in streaming education through this as well. Um, we spoke to them about a project that was uh, dear to my heart, which was to get young people to do documentaries about social issues, about political issues, about issues of growing up, um, and to make documentaries on cell phones. Um, and what we have done is we've got 10 young people from high schools here in Brevard, um, they have built teams around themselves of around six people, there are 60 kids beavering away. Uh, we've given them the cell phones, we've given them filmmakers to work with them, and they are shooting documentaries about things that are important to them. The filmmakers are working with them, teaching them transferable skills, so research, journalism, film shooting, uh, post-production, uh, sound, so on and so forth and all of those will come together for a red carpet premiere screening at the next Art and Algorithms amongst all those award-winning films. And uh, Boeing helped us fund that and, and the NEA did. And this is the first time that Brevard has had an invitational bid from the NEA uh, and a grant handed to us at Brevard for the work we're doing. So validated at a national level, it's fascinating and tremendously uh, reassuring we're doing the right thing. Anytime you go through a change like this, narrowing priorities, um, somebody winds up being on the inside, some people wind up losing, for lack of a better word. Um, I know that there's been some friction over, can you use the money like that from the Tourist Development Council? Again, you're funded by what, I think a part of a penny from the bed tax that people pay. Um, talk a little bit about that. Who, who, who have who have you lost support from and who have you gained support from uh, since going through this whole thing? Mm -hmm. it's, it's been absolutely fascinating and, and one of the things that um, I found, um, I'll use the word wonderful, quite wonderful, is so many people have stood up to support the work we do and to um, endorse us as um, individuals who are both uh, qualified and experienced and taking Brevard down this path without losing sight of what we had been doing before. We're not neglecting the artist in his bedroom, we're not neglecting the theatre, we're not neglecting any of the things that we're supposed to be doing, but this is in addition, it's additionality. And so, so many people have stood up to applaud that. I'm, I'm, I'm actually humbled. We were at a recent TDC meeting where the TDC board endorsed uh, what we were doing and, uh, and myself for, for leading that. And, um, I was, I was very touched by that. Um, you know, it's change, and um, change is sometimes difficult for some people. I don't believe for a moment anyone's lost. As I say, it's additionality, so we continue to do what we always did. It's additionality, and some people have the fear that our focus has shifted and they're not getting the attention they had before. Well, I think people that probably work for things like the, well, I know the Henniger Center director over there was concerned about, hey, wait a minute, you know, mm -hmm. this is money that used to be spent on groups like us and the Symphony Orchestra, maybe the King Center to promote, that we would use to promote mm -hmm. ourselves. Of mm -hmm. course they're going to miss that if mm -hmm. it doesn't, if it goes someplace else. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm sorry to cut across you. I'm, I'm delighted to be on your program because that's fundamentally flawed as an argument. It's just not true. I'll say it's not true again. You see, the money that is being argued about was never money used to promote any of those organizations. And this has been an argument that that particular lady has been mounting for 20 years. 
There's another pot of money which was used to promote those organizations, and that pot of money was given to each of those organizations to promote themselves. Before I arrived here, it was determined that if you put that bunch of money together, and if you gave it to TDC with that superior buying power, uh, by millions of dollars of ads and billboards and TV, then the people who are being promoted would get a bigger bang for the buck. Okay. That's, that's an Americanism, isn't it? I'm adopting Americanisms. Well done. And so 90% of those people are delighted you talk to the birding festival, the largest festival of its kind in America, you talk to the Valiant Air Command, you talk to Brevard Zoo, they're all perfectly happy with this arrangement. But some people have a tin can and a stick and they're making a huge amount of noise. So that was the issue with the money for promotion. The money that's being argued about was never used for promotion at all. And so there's a misdirection to confuse people and try and win an argument. And in fact, the money that was being argued about, uh, there was um, a request for a legal position. Um, the county attorney has examined it and said that that money which has been used for, gosh, I don't know how many years in this way, is both legal and appropriate. Um, and so I'm delighted that we got that opinion. I'm delighted with the number of people who stood up for the work of BCA, and I still support the Hanukkah as an important part of the rich tapestry, which is the cultural sector of Brevard. Um, and we are robust advocates on their behalf. The BSO, which was mentioned, interestingly, is a participant in the Cultural Marketing Initiative, which is the money we just spoke about. Uh, as is all of the people to whom that director referred to. So they participate in the programs, and yet that particular director is um, saying they don't like the programs and they don't want to play. Um, well, that's too bad. I, I foresee them being a centerpiece of something like Arts and Algorithm or, or, or you know, a, an event like that a, you know, could fit in. In a, in a very interesting way. They, 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 they're a tremendously important part of the arts and cultural sector and, and the vibrancy that we offer for residents and visitors uh, 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 alike. And um, as such, we're delighted to support them. We really are. Neil, thanks for, so much for joining us here today and explaining Thank you. things. It's been a pleasure. Well, that's our program. Thanks for joining us in the Florida Today newsroom. Remember, you can publish your reaction to this show or comment on anything you read in Florida Today. Just send an email to letters at floridatoday.com. I'm Matt Reed. We'll see you right here next Wednesday on WEFS-TV and floridatoday.com.